Hey, yo, when I teach, when mm -hmm. I teach mm -hmm. in the college, mm -hmm. I make sure that no matter what instrument they play, mm -hmm. that they know about Louis Armstrong, okay. that they know about Lester Young mm -hmm. and Coleman Hawkins, mm -hmm. and they know about Charlie Parker. Yeah, because they already know about Miles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they may know a little bit about Dizzy, mm -hmm. but if it's you know, if it's bass players, I want them to play Louis Armstrong on the bass. Yes. I want them to be able to play Charlie Parker on the bass, Lester Young. So they learn something like um, Lester Young's solo on Lady Be Good. Yes. Yes. Or they learn how to play da 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 you were there? Yeah. I knew. I <laughs> <laughs> no. I know the I came late. <laughs> ah, coffee for everybody. See, everybody looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's early, huh? So, it, I, I think young people now, no, they don't listen enough to the people that helped to create this music. But, there is still hope. <laughs> um, because there are some that listen to like, if it's a trumpet player, they listen to Louis Armstrong and they know a little bit about Jabbo Smith or Big Spider Bang. And they know a little bit about Bunk Johnson. And then they know about Roy Eldridge and Sweets Edison and Buck Clayton and Harry James and Charlie Shaver. Then they know a little bit about Dizzy and Fats Navarro and Miles and Kenny Dorham and Little Benny Harris and Red Rodney. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. then I think it's possible if you know these things. You know, there, there are times when I meet a young trumpet player. Uh, maybe five years ago, I was at the Monterey Jazz Festival, and and Clark Terry was supposed to conduct, but he got sick. Mm -hmm. So I, do you want to translate? You have to translate. No. Okay. Everybody I'm just yapping. Okay. Everybody understand? Yes. Yeah. Even Francesca. <laughs> she speaks oh, very well. Yes. Yes. You can you can speak in French anyway. So so I conduct the high school. The Monterey Jazz was a high school band. Mm -hmm. So I heard one trumpet player playing, and I said to him, I thought when I heard him play, he would be a good trumpet player to study the style of Kenny Dorham. So I said to him, I said, man, you should check out some Kenny Dorham. That he was 16 years old, and he said to me, I'm not going to check out Kenny Dorham. I said, why not? He said, it will mess up my style. <laughs> and I said, you're 16 years old. You don't have a style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so there are many young people. Unfortunately, there are many young people like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I grew up um, idolizing Dizzy. Mm -hmm. As I got older, I started to listen to his influences, mm -hmm. Roy Eldridge, Charlie Parker, and then I started to listen to Roy Eldridge's influences, mm -hmm. Coleman Hawkins, Benny Carter, mm -hmm. and then I started listening to their influences, Louis Armstrong, and then I started listening to his influence, King Oliver. Mm -hmm. So I can go back to the, yes. mm -hmm. le commencement. Voilà. Comme Go back to the commencement. <laughs> no, the, the beginning. The beginning. Hey, not the real beginning because that's Buddy Bolden, but stylistically, I, you know, I know what King Oliver sounded like because there's a recording of him and Jelly Roll Morton in 1925 playing uh, King Porter Stomp. It's not so um, advanced. It's Louis Armstrong. So jazz at one point was here, mm -hmm. and then Louis Armstrong and Sidney Bechet <laughs> take it up here. Yes. So, and I think I think it's important to study these masters because if you don't, 
have an understanding of the history, you don't know what it is now. And you don't know where it can go with the future. You have to know the past. Yes. So Dizzy used to say, <laughs> you keep one foot in the past, you keep one foot in the now, the present, and an eye towards the future. I will ask you the same question. <laughs> because obviously, the, I think they are some of his favorites. I like uh, the black line in the history of jazz. Uh, the, the black line. Is the, the black line. See the black line, no white line. What do you and mean? The, the, the black people? Yeah, yeah. But there are great white trumpet players too. <laughs> yeah. and by saying I only like the black line, you miss out on much great music. <laughs> so I you know, on Lee Morgan's very last recording, I had just come to New York. I was 18 years old and I played on that record. And I sat next to Lee Morgan. When I met him, and, and uh, not too long after that, you know, Lee Morgan's style. Lee Morgan's style. He, Lee Morgan was very, very sassy. You know, and sassy is a word that they use with Sarah Vaughan. That was her nickname, sassy. But sassy means a little bit cocky. You know, but all trumpet players are like that. <laughs> See? The ones we know. No, all, all the trumpet players have a little bit of, too, maybe a little bit too much ego. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, you know, Lee Morgan said, Lee Morgan said the trumpet is an extroverted instrument. Yeah. Extrovert. You have to be, man. And Chet Baker played beautiful, beautiful trumpet. Uh, do you think uh, um, Chet Baker is uh, sopravvalutato? Overestimated. Well, obviously, he thinks that Chet Baker is overestimated. Yes. <laughs> and, and I am not here to argue with you, but I just say, listen to everybody. Yes. You know, listen to everybody. Everyone has something to say. Mm -hmm. And beneath the color of the skin, we are all the same. Yeah, more or less. Well, you're the one that smokes, right? No, no. Where's the guy that smoke outside? Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Bonjour, no. <laughs> Good day. Do you think? So I don't want to argue with you about black trumpet players and white trumpet players, because if I say to you, Harry James was a great, great trumpet player, not only trumpet player but musician. Yeah. And you say, Harry James, uh, I don't need to convince you of that. Or if I say Tom Harrell right now is one of the great trumpet players in jazz. <laughs> iPhone. No, my baby. Your baby. <laughs> my baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We have one thing in common, we just <laughs> became fathers. You know, you know, underneath the skin, we all have to deal with the same problems. You know, we all have the same problems. And those problems are universal. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. So, yes, the main stylist in jazz trumpet playing are black. Yes, I would agree. You have Buddy Bolden, King Oliver, Roy Eldridge, Dizzy, Miles, Clifford Brown, 
Reception. Fats in the Bibles. Fats. <laughs> Booker Little. Yeah. You know, Freddie Hubbard, Lee Morgan, Woody Shaw. Maybe a little bit of Don Cherry if you want to get modern. Mm -hmm. Depends on your taste. It's it's all subjective though. And I would be I would be an idiot as what? a musician if I didn't listen to great white European classical composers. I'd be an idiot if I didn't listen to Bach and Beethoven and Schumann and Chopin and Ravel and Debussy and Foray and Puccini. I'd be stupid. So you have to, one has to listen to everything. And you listen to them, but you say, I like this. Okay. But I think you are missing a big part of the a big part of the tarp de pomme. <laughs> you know, here you have here you have the tarte de pomme, tarte framboise, tarte de fraise, tarte au citron, and then you have the, the, the uh, tarte uh, tatin, and then you miss out on the tarte tatin, tarte citron, tarte de fraise. You have only the tarte de pomme. So you must have the other tarts. Because the tarts are good. Cigarettes, no good. So what you should do today is you should go home. Thad Jones tell, told me once, I said, Thad, Thad, I was young, I was 18 or 19. Thad, I don't really, he was trying to tell me about Puccini. Because he'd love to listen to the melodies of Puccini. And I said, I don't really like opera. And he looked at me and said, you should go home and listen to opera. Simple. You don't like Chet Baker? I give you homework. <laughs> you must go home and listen to Chet Baker. <laughs> listen to Chet Baker with Jerry Mulligan without the piano. It's great. Yes. So, you know, that's what I say. It's okay? You happy now? <laughs>54th Street, and across the street, Roy Eldridge played Jimmy Ryan's. Mm -hmm. But I always stay with Dizzy. Mm -hmm. I was young and stupid, though. I didn't go across <laughs> the street to listen to Roy Eldridge. But later, I had a chance to play with Roy Eldridge. They did a, uh, at Carnegie Hall, a town, town hall, I think it was, they did a tribute to Roy Eldridge, and they want me to play his solo on After You've Gone. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn the solo after you've gone. And then I see when Dizzy plays, do you that come from Roy Eldridge <laughs> on After You've Gone. And Roy Eldridge, I think, was one of the greatest and most underrated right. trumpet players in jazz history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's very, very, very um, powerful trumpet player. Mm -hmm. He's very stylistic. His style is individual. Nobody plays the trumpet like Roy Eldridge. And he's very creative. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, he was always very competitive. You know, because back then, they would have jam sessions. 
and everybody try to do better than the other person. And Roy was usually the one to come out on top. But then one time Dizzy played so well it made Roy Eldridge cry. And after that Dizzy sat Roy down because Dizzy was um, very knowledgeable about history, very intelligent. And he said to Roy, Roy, what I'm doing on the trumpet comes from you. And it, it doesn't mean that what you are doing is not great. So then they became good friends. Before that, Roy Eldridge didn't like Dizzy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit jealousy, uh, but they didn't, you know, they fight all the time. And then Dizzy play, Roy Eldridge cry, Dizzy talk, they become friends. Um, and then there's a story about Roy Eldridge. You don't know, you don't know this story. Roy Eldridge used to used to ambush trumpet players. You know, at a session. You said, Hey Roy, come up and play. Oh no, I'm, I don't feel too good. And then he would get out his horn and wipe everybody out. <laughs> or or they would be playing on the bandstand and he'd walk in the club playing. And everybody looked, oh, oh. but he was in Detroit, and there was a female trumpet player, and her name was Dolly, like, hello, Dolly, hello, Dolly, this is Louis. Her name was Dolly Jones, and she, Roy Eldridge, played and have a battle with Dolly Jones, and Dolly Jones won. <laughs> And you don't hear about that. <laughs> so I, I, I just think that Roy Eldridge, you know, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah, buongiorno. See, everybody look. Ah! <laughs> Looking for the lady in the white pants. <laughs> so Roy Eldridge, I think, was, you know, he was one of the greatest trumpet players. It's unfortunate that he's thought of as a link between uh, Louis Armstrong and Dizzy. Because you don't think of Charlie Parker as a link between Lester Young and John Coltrane. Stupid, stupid old. And my relationship with him, you know, I did a couple, you know, I did some concerts with Roy Eldridge when he couldn't play. So he would come to the concert and he would sing and I would play his solos. And we would talk about different trumpet players like Wynton Marsalis or Lou Soloff or, you know, some young trumpet players. And we sit and listen. Uh, I remember one time we were sitting in the club and he heard Lou Soloff play with a plunger. And Roy just said, he's not doing it right. <laughs> because there's a certain way that you play with a plunger. I should I show you. This is this is good. This is why I brought my horn. I knew something like this would happen. What's wrong, man? You wanna close the door? Because you hear the machine, the yes. coffee machine. Espresso. La lava What? Uh, dishwasher. Oh, the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You need to get one of those German dishwashers. The, 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 the Bosch. It's very quiet. Bosch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very expensive, though. So when Lou Soloff was playing the plunger, he played the plunger like this. He was playing with the tongue go. Like that. Flutter tonguey. But Roy said, that's wrong, because what you're supposed to do is. And you hum while you play. And it's a totally different sound. And then he showed me, like on after you've gone, he said, it's easier 
if you play with these fingerings rather than and I'm sure that he worked all of that out when he was with Gene Krupa's band. You know, if you're on the bandstand playing that every night, you you have to find the easiest way to do that. Yeah. You know, you're driving on the bus, and for Roy, he can't stay in the same hotels at that time. He can't eat in the same restaurants. So it's almost like being outcast because of the color of his skin. But he, you know, I think that Roy had some, and I don't want to say anger. I don't, you know, it's a mistake to think that he was angry about it. What, what, what the emotion is when that happened, it's pain. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts you as a human being that other human beings treat you like that. And the anger is a defense to keep from feeling the hurt or the pain. So I think, you know, I think Roy had a lot of pain inside, as did all the music, black musicians who played at that time. Um, but this is one way to get past the pain. Okay? I don't mean to get too heavy, but... <laughs>